This is the Music History Today podcast for August 30th. On today's show, Kanye makes an announcement, the Go-Go's hang it up, and an event in Notting Hill inspires a classic song by The Clash. First up, though, on this date in 1941, the film Spare Copper, starring singer George Formby, premiered in Sweden. In 1959, Carol King married lyricist Jerry Goffin. In 1969, three three-day music festivals started. The Sky River Rock Festival in Tonino, Washington, the New Orleans Pop Festival, and the Texas International Pop Festival in Louisville, Texas. Also in 1969, the band Earth changed its name to Black Sabbath mainly because Ozzy Osbourne blurted out during a concert that it was their name and the band just kind of went with it. In 1970, Jimi Hendrix played his last concert in Great Britain. It was at the Isle of Wight Festival. In 1972, John Lennon performed his last full concert. It was with Yoko Ono at Madison Square Garden. He would perform again at the Garden, but only as a guest performer during an Elton John concert. In 1976, the event that inspired the Clash song White Riot took place when young black people clashed with police in the Notting Hill riots in London, England. In 1988, actress Julianne Phillips filed for divorce from Bruce Springsteen. In 1993, Billy Joel was David Letterman's first musical guest on David's CBS Late Night Talk Show Edition. In 1995, James Taylor and Carly Simon performed together for the first time in 16 years at a benefit concert. The two were married for a time. In 2009, Davy Jones of the Monkees married wife Jessica Pacheco. In 2016, the Go-Go's played their final concert until their reunion just before the COVID lockdowns. And in 2018, pop artist and political activist Bobby Vine was arrested in his home country of Uganda as he was trying to leave the country. In classical music, in 1751, George Frederick Handel finished his Jephtha Oratorio. In 1945, Dmitry Shostakovich finished his Ninth Symphony. And in 1992, Philip Glass's Symphony No. 1 premiered. In theater, in 1992, the revival of the musical The Most Happy Fella closed on Broadway. In award ceremonies that were held on August 30th in 2015, Kanye West announced during his speech at the MTV Video Music Awards that he would run for president in 2020. He was a man of his word, sort of. Taylor Swift and Kendrick Lamar, by the way, won Video of the Year for Bad Blood during that ceremony. In 2020 at the Video Music Awards, Lady Gaga was the big winner that year. Albums that were released in the UK on August 30th include in 1974 when Harry Nilsson released Pussycats. Meanwhile in America, in 1965, Bob Dylan released Highway 61 Revisited. In 1966, the Mamas and the Papas released their self-titled album. In 1968, The Birds released Sweetheart of the Rodeo. In 1971, The Beach Boys released Surf's Up. In 1977, Barry White released Barry White Sings for Someone You Love. In 1982, Hughes Thrall released their self-titled album. In 1983, XTC released Mummer. In 1984, Miami Sound Machine, now known these days as Gloria Estefan and Miami Sound Machine, released Eyes of Innocence. In 1988, John Hyatt released Slow Turning, and Boz Gags released Other Roads. In 1989, the Cover Girls released We Can't Go Wrong. In 1990, REO Speedwagon released The Earth, A Small Man, His Dog, and a Chicken. In 1993, Dark Tranquility released Sky Dancer. In 1994, Bad Religion released Stranger Than Fiction. In 1994, same day, Luis Miguel released Segundo Romance. In 2004, Asia released Silent Nation, and Bjork released Medulla. In 2005, Death Cab for Cutie released Plans, and Bob Dylan released the bootleg series Volume 7, No Direction Home, the soundtrack, and also he did a twofer, finalizing that little twofer with Live at the Gaslight, 1962. And in 2019, 
Tool released Fear Inoculum. Singles that were released in the UK on August 30th include in 1968 when the Beatles did a twofer of sorts. They released Revolution and they released Hey Jude, which became the first single to be released by Apple Records in Great Britain, that is. Also in 1968, Mary Hopkin released Those Were the Days and Gary Lewis and the Playboys released Sealed with a Kiss. Meanwhile, in America, speaking of twofers, Mary Wells in 1963 did a twofer. She released What's Easy for Two is So Hard for One and You've Lost the Sweetest Boy. In 1976, the Beach Boys released It's Okay. In 1978, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers released Listen to Her Heart. In 1983, Huey Lewis and the News released Heart and Soul. In 1986, Tina Turner released Typical Male. In 1993, Aerosmith released Fever and Nirvana released Heart Shaped Box. In 2016, Ariana Grande and Nicki Minaj released Side to Side. And in 2017, Maroon 5 released What Lovers Do and Why Don't We Release These Girls. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on August 30th include John Phillips of the Mamas and the Papas, producer Swizz Beats, Ryan Ross of Panic at the Disco, Aaron Barrett of Real Big Fish, singer B.B. Rexa, DJ Paul Oakenfold, Martin Jackson of Swing Out Sister, bassist Horace Panter of The Specials, and also General Public, Rich Cronin of The Light Funky Ones, Mickey Moody of Whitesnake, and also the group Juicy Lucy, BBC DJ John Peel, country music singer Kitty Wells, twins Jim and John Hager of the group The Hagers, Singer Dana Rosemary Scallon, Dave Brokey of Guar, album cover artist Robert Crumb, singer Capri Everett, rapper Jules Coutinho, rapper BK the Ruler, rapper Boogie, singer Shalino Sanchez, rapper Jermaine Coleman, session bassist Detlev Bayer, John McNally of The Searchers, singer Charles Colbert of Gary and the Nightlights, also the group The American Breed, and also the group The Daylighters. Multi-instrumentalist John Douglas Sermon, singer Kenny Andrews of the group The Darts, Ronald Batil of Wild Cherry, saxophonist Gerald Albright, drummer Martin Jackson of the group Magazine, drummer Keith McKenzie of the group The Shaman, DJ and producer Robert Clavillis of CNC Music Factory, and also Clavillis and Cole, singer Peter Cunna of D Ream, singer Cassidy Osborne of Shadaisy, composer Simon Bainbridge, singer Johnny Mann, bassist Placide Adams, and jazz trumpet player Kenny Dorham. Artists who unfortunately passed away on August 30th include composer Juan Del Encina, who passed away in 1529 at the age of 61. Composer Jean-Baptiste Maurice Kinault passed away in 1745 at the age of 57. Composer Joseph Anton Bauer passed away in 1808 at the age of 83. Composer Theodore Zwettler passed away in 1826 at the age of 67. Harpist and opera singer Angela Peralta passed away from yellow fever in 1883 at the age of 38. Composer Kate Loder passed away in 1904 at the age of 79. Pianist Dimitar Nenov passed away in 1953 at the age of 51. Musicologist and composer Anita Donastia passed away in 1956 at the age of 70. Composer Alexander Albrecht passed away in 1958 at the age of 73. 
Music arranger and composer Axel Stordahl passed away from cancer in 1963 at the age of 50. Conductor Leo Pappenheim passed away in 1982 at the age of 86. Drummer Philly Joe Jones of the Miles Davis Quintet passed away from heart issues in 1985 at the age of 62. Musicologist and composer Otto Mortensen passed away in 1986 at the age of 79. Papa D. Allen of the group War passed away from brain aneurysm in 1988 at the age of 58. Sterling Morrison of the Velvet Underground passed away from lymphoma in 1995 at the age of 53. DJ Dennis Pop passed away from stomach cancer in 1998 at the age of 35. Composer Andor Kovac passed away in 2005 at the age of 90. Music executive and manager of the band Violator, Chris Lighty, was shot and killed in 2012 at the age of 44. The person who also introduced surtitles to operas in 1983... Surtitles being the subtitles that are translated text and put on video screens during an opera so that the audience knows what's actually going on. This person was also the opera director of the Canadian Opera Company from 1976 to 1988 and the San Francisco Opera from 1988 to 2001. This person is Latfi Mansouri, who passed away in 2013 at the age of 84. And Skip Prokoff of the group The Poppers passed away in 2017 at the age of 73. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is August 31st, when in 1973, the Rolling Stones released their classic album, Goat's Head Soup. (laughs) 